Have you ever faced a situation where you were doing some artwork, any personal or official call, or something extremely important, and your siblings or friends pranked you and spoiled your work? Or have you left your laptop switched on and unattended for just a few minutes in college or office, only to return and find your email spammed? And are you looking for a solution to these disastrous situations? Well, today we will be doing just that. Let's go ahead and make you prank proof. Now, before starting off with the code, let's have a quick demo of how this thing will work. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's imagine I will be studying now and let's see what happens. Hey, what do you want? Hey! I'm hey, here. what do you want? We did it! Coming back to our code, now that we have an idea of how this thing is going to work, we will need three libraries, that is CV2, WinSound, and OS. Only CV2 will have to be pip installed. The other two come by default along with Python. So we will go through this entire code in steps, all right? So this will be much more easier for you to understand. Firstly, we will need to capture the video. That's the most important part. So what you say is, let me go ahead and enlarge in this again. All right, this works. In a variable camera, we say video capture, and it takes the parameter zero. That means that I'm taking the default uh, camera of my laptop, and if you have multiple cameras, you can try out one, two, three in order that way. So while camera dot is opened, you need to allow it access. So is opened, what we do is into frame one. We do not care about whatever the other values being returned are. So into the first frame we say cam dot read later uh, we need to display this so we say cv2 dot i am show right and to that our second parameter will be frame one and we also need to close this so we give cv2 dot wait key and we give the variable x so whenever you press x the screen closes hey and i'm back again Okay, so this is what the first step does. Now, the second step, what we will be doing is, let's say I am still here in this position and I move. Okay, I keep moving. Or let's say some object behind me keeps moving, which is our basic uh, aim, right? To detect something moving behind us. So what it's going to do is take the original frame, me sitting out here straight, and whatever moves, it's basically going to subtract the movement and display that to you. So let's see the code of it. Bye-bye. I'm going to go ahead and remove this now because we don't need it anymore. And we'll update our original code. So what you need to add in is take in another second frame that basically reads any other movement. And as I, as I said, you'll basically be subtracting the original frame and the movement. So into a variable movement, you say cv2.abs diff. That is absolute difference. And pass in frame 1 and frame 2 and rest everything will be the same and now what you want to show is the difference so i am show movement let's go ahead and run this okay do you see i'm blinking that's the difference i'm speaking you see the white see my hand the white region will basically be the difference all right let's move ahead this being done now things get slightly complicated but we're going to stick to it and handle things perfectly. After all of this is done, what you need to do is, in case you have viewed my uh, make image turn images into cartoons, you will know about uh, grayscale and threshold in detail. So maybe you'd want to visit that. <laughs> That's totally your wish. But I'd really like if you do. So what we do is, the image that it's capturing, I want to convert it to the grayscale. So RGB to gray. Okay, cv2.rgb to gray. And next, we want to get the threshold of it. What does threshold do? It will basically give you the outlines of your image. It only returns you with the outline. And it deals with only binary, that is black and white, 255. We have taken in the parameter 255. And hence, that will be white. That's the only two lines you need to add in now. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, you see... Whatever moves, you only get an outline of it, nothing else. All right, I hope this is okay. 
let's move ahead i i think you got the concept right now step four let's i am going to keep this now i won't delete it what did we do in threshold we got in all the tiniest details right of our movement image now we're going to do something that is sort of opposite to getting the details we want to dilate it now have you heard of dilated iris or something like that it's an issue with the eye dilated iris what does that mean your eyes basically become bigger all right imagine the same concept you are dilating whatever your threshold image is and you pass in thresh so cv2 dot dilate and you pass in any kernel size that has to be an odd number and iterations is one how many times now one will give you a very thin border you make it two or three you'll get a thicker one all right that's the only difference now that we have gotten rid of the smaller details we come to step five step five is basically getting all the contours now what's a contour you are let's say your nose okay taking your nose and okay let me comment out a few lines so that we get the original one back just give me a moment so that i can actually explain what is going on okay hi uh, so what happens is contour so let's take our nose again it'll keep tracing see this is this is a continuous line okay the eyebrows the eyes these are continuous lines so all the continuous lines are going to be grouped into one and they are going to trace it that's what a contour is now wherever there's heat light and continuous patterns it's basically going to trace them and draw in the lines for you all right let's go ahead okay so let's get in contours and i'll try and explain this to you again with a little bit of an image let's first try and understand it so what are we going to do we're going to say find contours and we take in only the first value that it returns it's basically going to give you a list of all the moving parts okay so the second parameter returns you the retrieval of your movement and cv2 dot chain approx simple now what is this this is basically the points that it deals with now for this i'm going to go ahead and okay let's take this line so what it does is the approximate simple the chain approximate simple will only take in lines that is only the max two points the end points of a line all right it won't sit and get in each and every single point that traces this line all right forgive my drawing but please bear with it it only takes the end two points and it doesn't overload the memory all right that's basically it and let's go back to our code that's what chain approx simple does if you would have given chain approx none it would have eaten up all lots of memory space and that's not what you want it would have stored every single point all right okay this being done let's go ahead and understand another concept now let's take it this image all right let's take this image let me get back my pen so now what we want to concentrate on is we do not want the tiniest movements of the eyes blinking as we saw you saw my eyes blinking and it detects it you don't want to detect the lips moving because that's not our main aim we aren't going to be prank proof with if it detects the movements of our eyes and lips and our fingers and all of that you want to may take this to bigger scale and thus detect larger movements right so let's say this entire figure moves that's when it will be detected all right so this is our next aim let's go ahead and fulfill this back to the code so from the list of all the possible this is the extra code that we are concentrating on now so from the list of all the possible points moved points we iterate through them now if it is less than 5000 now these less than 5000 basically understand it as the smaller movements we don't we don't want to take it at all we basically ignore it and hence we pass in continue so skip that iteration next we take bounding okay we take in the x y width and height all right and then we say cv2 dot bounding rectangle of all the, that for that c value okay the movement that occurred trace the maximum limits of it the width height and everything and next create a rectangle around it so cv2 dot rectangle i am dealing with the original colored frame now because we don't want black and white pictures right so frame 
you pass in the first point, the second point, and next you pass in any RGB uh, color of your choice, any mix, any color that you want. I've taken yellow, and three will be basically the width of the rectangle being drawn. One becomes thinner, three becomes thicker, and so on. This being done, we have generally finished all of our code except for a few small things, very, very tiny, but that's what will make it interesting. We need to add in the sound and also another feature that I have saved for later on. Okay, let's come to our final code, which gives you two features. That is the alarm sound that goes off. You all heard it in the beginning. And also, if you have very important work going on, what you can do is you can immediately shut off your PC so that they cannot try and do and you they cannot cause any harm to any file folder in your PC. You simply shut it off. That's also possible. So what you do is this is your final code and you after the rectangle and everything that we saw, you say win sound dot play sound. We have already imported win sound and OS. The first will be a wave file. Now I'll be providing what I did was basically do text to speech using an online converter and I simply converted that to wave. Now I will be providing you all with both the links so you all can just take it from the description below. It will help you. Now win sound dot send uh, sound a sync. Okay, it'll go on asynchronously. That is nothing is going to disrupt it. And lastly, you have os.system shut down and you are saying that it'll sh shut down after seven seconds. Okay, so instead of seven seconds, let's make it a 10. Okay, now I'm going to close this and I'll go ahead with my phone so that I can actually show you all how the PC is shutting down. See you in a bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this now and hope I can display it properly without moving too much. Okay, this works. And now I'm going to move something. I'll move my hand from the back and let's see what happens. Hey, what do you, hey, what do you there want? There you go. It's going to be shut down. Nice, right? And hold on. It needs 10 seconds and that's it. We're shutting down. I hope this was a nice video and you all enjoyed it. Do try it out and let me know how you all like it. Bye-bye. I'll see you all soon.